Hello and welcome to our last and final topic of PV system design. Here I have divided this chapter into two sessions. In first session, we will learn how to design on grid PV solar system, and in second session, we will learn how to design off grid PV solar system. So let's get started with first session. Before that, you should know various types of PV solar system. We have on grid solar system, which is grid connected solar system. Then we have off grid solar system, which includes batteries for electrical storage. Then we have hybrid PV solar system, the mixture of both on grid and off grid with some additional sources like diesel generator, wind energy, etc. Coming back to on grid solar system. This is also called as net metering PV solar rooftop systems. And believe me, this picture tells the whole story of net metering here. So let's understand this. Starting from right hand side, we have power plants from where we get electricity, which comes to our home through transmission lines, substations and transformers. And finally to electrical poles and service lines get connected to our electric city meter. On the left hand side, we have solar panels. DC power from these panels get converted into AC power by inverter. Then this power is fed to our loads through AC breaker panel and output of electric meter is also connected to AC breaker. So grid power is also fed to household loads. The electric meter is bidirectional meter. So it measures energy which is imported and exported from grid. Yes, if you are generating more energy from solar than your requirement, then energy will go back to grid, which is called as export energy. And generally during night, when solar doesn't work, you will get energy from grid, called as energy imported from the grid. If you have solar rooftop net metering system at your home, you can generate your own solar energy on your rooftop. You use it during day and if excess generated, you can give back it to grid. This is also called as grid tie system as this is also grid interactive system because in this case your intra inverter interacts with grid. Here you can import and export energy from grid. As I told earlier, a bidirectional meter is used which keeps the track of energy imported and exported from grid. So your total bill will equals to energy import minus energy export from grid. So after having this, if you import more energy from grid than export energy, you have to pay bill which will be less than your conventional bill. This happens during rainy seasons of June, July and August when sun is not that bright compared to winters and summer. In next case, if your exported energy equals import energy from grid, so your bill goes zero and your energy charges are zero. So no bill this time. but you have to pay only fixed charges which you have pay every month which is very nominal compared to your energy charges. In next case, if you are export more energy from grid than import energy, you will have to pay zero bill and with that you have extra excess units generated which will be credited in your energy bank. And this excess import shall be carried forward to your next billing cycle. So net metering is the best for residential, commercial and industrial customers who wants to go solar and save money. Here is the energy bill of one hour our customers who has installed solar PV net metering system in his home. In this bill, he exported total 243 units and imported 304 units. So total exported 243 units shall be adjusted 
and his total bill will be 304 units minus 243 units which is equal to 61 units so though he has imported 304 units in this month he only has to pay for only 61 units so only 480 rupees bill this is very less than his conventional bill before going solar on the other hand in this case where he has exported 253 units and imported 208 units from grid as he have exported more units than imported units its adjusted unit will be equal to 208 units and excess units will be in his energy bank that's 45 units which will be carry forward to his next billing cycle best part is he do not need to pay any energy charges he only will pay fixed charge of 170 rupees so he is saving thousands of rupees monthly coming to the very important topic here we will learn how to design grid type pv system if you want to know how much kilowatt of pv solar system you will need you will have to follow some steps first of all find out annual average solar radiation of your location that's equal to the sun peak hours then you have to calculate the annual energy consumption of your home that's the total number of units consumed in one year then we will use this formula to find pv system size then you will consider losses which comes in pv system finally we will make a list of material that we will require for our solar project so let's start with first step here i am taking my home rooftop solar project example so i have to find out the annual solar radiation of nagpur which is 5.47 hours you can find this data easily on google or on nrle website coming to the second step here we have to find out annual energy consumption so use your electric bill where you will find out history of your monthly consumption data you also can go to your dixcom website to find out the unit of energy consumed in every month as you can see on my dixcom website using my consumer number i have find out my 12 months consumption data so to find out my annual energy consumption i have to add them up and here's total 2281 kilowatt hours per annum so this amount of energy my home uses every year so now i will calculate pv system size by putting all the values in this formula this formula is very easy where we have total unit consumed in one year divided by sun peak hours multiplied by 365 days which are total number of days in one year after putting all the data i will get 1.145 kilowatt peak which is required solar system size for my home set the actual energy i need but i have to consider losses which occur in various components of solar system so we will add those losses in the next step talking about the losses in the system we consider solar panel losses which is 10% due to dust accumulated on panels and due to high temperature as solar panels have negative temperature coefficient of power and with every degree rise of temperature we will lose some power that's why this losses next is an inverter losses which is 5% as we are considering efficiency of the inverter as 95% there are cable losses also due to resistance of cable so we are taking only 5% cable losses so total loss we can consider 20 to 25% in the system if we consider the losses in the system we have to increase the pv system size and that's we are doing right here if you consider 20% loss so you have to divide the number by 0.8 that's because 100% minus 20% equals to 80% or you can multiply the number by 1.25 so i am getting 1.43 kilowatt peak i am rounding off that off 
to 1.5 kilowatt peak so i will require 1500 watt solar panels here and on grid inverter of same rating one shortcut is that you can just divide your energy consumption by 365 then by 4 or you can just divide by 1500 you will get your answer next i will make the bill of materials this includes 1500 watt solar panels which includes five number of 300 or 315 320 watt panels model mounting structure 1.5 kilowatt on grid inverter ac and dc cables as per requirement mc4 connectors cable conduits fasteners etc switching and protection systems acdb and dcdb solar generation meter and bidirectional meter earthing kit and lightning arrestor it is the single line diagram of my system where i have shown five numbers of 315 watt solar panels after that dcdb between solar panels and 1.5 kilowatt grid tie inverter that is acdb after inverter after that solar generation meter which will show the energy generated by solar system followed by net meter same ac connection is going to load through main distribution panel here you can see i have shown all thing by green lines to every components there is also a lightning arrester inverter wi-fi is also shown which is wirelessly connected to home internet which is used for remote monitoring of the solar system yes you can analyze the performance of your system on your mobile phone or your laptop using remote monitoring system here i have 1.5 kilowatt inverter specs and solar panel specs side by side here i am using five numbers of 315 watts solar panels in series which makes 45 volts multiplied by 5 which equals to input voltage of 225 volts and that is in voltage range of inverter which is 55 to 380 volts this inverter has only one mppt strings so no issues here one string of five solar panels will be connected to this inverter for multiple mppt inverter you have to divide total number of panels by total number of strings of mppt but you have to be in, in inverter input voltage range and try to operate in optimum voltage for best efficiency output for cable sizing you must know the operating current rating which is 10 amperes in dc side and 7.5 amperes in ac side in my case so i have to multiply system load currents by safety factor 1.56 so here i have the ampacity chart of various sizes of cable so maximum 15 to 20 amps current will flow through my cables so i have to match the current to find the suitable size of the cable so after analysis i can go for 1.5 square mm of cable but for safer side i will go for 2.5 square mm cable but i recommended you to go for 4 square mm cable for long distance length cable you can overestimate the cable size for selecting the rating of mcb and fuses follow same steps but there is a shortcut for a system up to 5 kilowatt go for 4 square mm cable and for 5 to 10 kilowatt system go for 6 square mm cable for about 10 kilowatt systems you have to calculate cable size accordingly here is the on grid hybrid system there you can have batteries backup normally grid tie system do not work during power cuts due to islanding feature in the inverter on grid hybrid system works also during power cuts because battery is there for you you can select batteries according to your backup time required batteries get charged by solar as well as by grid yes this system is slightly costlier than normal on grid system so we came to an end of this session 
where we have learned about types of solar PV system, about net metering, we learn how to design grid type PV system, we have seen single line diagram and lastly about on grid hybrid system. As I said, I have referred so many websites for this session and many data sheets of inverters, solar panels and cables. Here is your Google assignment. As you did site visit and site analysis of your rooftop, design a PV system solar rooftop system for your home. Analyze your bill and tariff. Find out how much subsidy is available on solar net metering system in your state. Find out what is PPA in solar power system. Find out apps for PV system design. One more Android application that I have for you is called as Arun app by Ministry of New and Renewable Energy where you can find many things about solar rooftop system starting from basic information to state schemes and policies on rooftop solar system. So what are you waiting for? Go and explore this wonderful web. Till then see you in the next session where we will design off-grid solar system. Bye.